the recovery process. So uh, first we'll start with um, Alex Amparo. Um, he's with FEMA and he's gonna talk about individual assistance. I'm gonna stand up if you don't mind. Let me just uh, first uh, just really tell you how encouraging it is to see this community. I know that you've been through a lot, uh, Chairman and Director and all commissioners, um, and uh, I have the unfortunate uh, responsibility of going from community to community and working with them, uh, working with folks uh, post-disaster, uh, and, uh, and it's a tough job. Uh, what makes it easier when I see things like, uh, you know, like this school and, and the football game that you had last, uh, last week, uh, you know, little things to bring the community back together and mean something. Um, I also want to thank you for including us. I hope that you see us as part of your community and part of your team. Uh, our job is to provide assistance, and we're going to do that, and we'll do it to the greatest degree that we can. Uh, there are some limitations that we have, and I want to be very honest with you uh, coming today so that you understand what our programs uh, 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 cover. Uh, and uh, I'm certain just having had a couple of uh, a couple opportunities to speak with uh, your commissioners that they're going to hold us accountable to that, and, and I welcome that opportunity and your director as well. Um, so let's first talk a little bit about the individual assistance program. Uh, the individual assistance program is set up to provide uh, supplementary assistance uh, post-disaster. The primary assistance that folks will receive is uh, through insurance, and there will be some folks to talk about insurance if you're insured. Uh, we want to make sure that you contact your insurance company and you begin that process. That does not preclude you from getting FEMA assistance, but it is the first thing that you should do if you have not done that already. After that, we ask that you um, register for assistance with FEMA. You can do it through a variety of different ways. Uh, you can go to your phone and download the FEMA app uh, and apply for assistance that way. You can go to disasterassistance.gov. Uh, and apply for assistance, you can call us uh, at 1-800-621-FEMA uh, or you can see someone, one of the folks that are outside, they're also able to uh, provide you uh, 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 ability to register. Uh, and so that's the kind of the first line. What happens next is that you will receive a phone call from a, a inspector. Now. There have been 1,800 people that have applied for assistance um, in uh, uh, Washington County, uh, 300 plus over the last two days since we, we, we last spoke. Um, we have issued 531 inspections. That means that we've uh, gotten to that, that amount to our inspectors. That number will continue to go up. Uh, we've completed 140 inspections. Uh, Two days ago, it was 50 inspections. So that number will continue to go up. I know that many of you have applied for assistance uh, as, as much as 10 days ago. Uh, understand we're getting and surging our inspectors in now, and so the wait time that you have from when they will contact you will continue to decrease as time goes on. Uh, the inspectors will contact you. Uh, they will make three different attempts to contact you. They'll contact you at three different times of the day uh, in, in trying to get a hold of you. Return the phone call. Uh, get back to them. They will set up a time where they can meet you at your damaged dwelling. Now, I understand that there are uh, 58 different circumstances in the crowd here in terms of the number of people because it's all individual. Uh, but I will cover some of the major points with you uh, about what determines eligibility. The program of individual assistance is set up to make sure that you can stay in your home and that your home is habitable. If you have a complete loss of your home, uh, the inspector will go through, make that determination, uh, they will leave, uh, and then they will provide us information. And we, the, the information that you provide about your, uh, how would you want your assistance given to you is very important, whether it's a bank account, uh, whether uh, you want us to mail you a check, uh, you have those options when you register to be able to tell us. If you'd like to update any information on your application, you can see the folks outside, you can contact us or you can do that on, on your uh, uh, online as well. Um, what is eligible? 
Immediately, it's about a repair or rental assistance. If your house is inhabitable, then you will be eligible for rental assistance. If your house has damage, the inspector will go, and I encourage you to show them everywhere your house is damaged. The important thing is whether your house is still habitable or not. And so that means if you don't have a bathroom, it's not habitable. If you don't have a bedroom, it's not habitable, right? And so those are the things that, now FEMA assistance does not cover your carport, does not cover your garage, does not cover the shed. Uh, but if it has to do with your house, where, you, where you're staying at, it does cover that. And that's very important to understand, to, to know. Again, not because we don't want to, this is how the, the program's been set up. Uh, the inspector will go line by line in looking at your home. Again, be there, show them all of the information. They want to get accurate information. Based off of that information, we'll provide you assistance to repair your house. Uh, if your house is being repaired, we will still provide you rental assistance that you can use. And, um, and then after that, you will also receive an SBA application, a Small Business Administration, and there'll be some more discussion uh, that will come from uh, our, our panelists here to talk to you why it's important for you to fill that application in, send it, and let a determination be made. Now, I understand that you say, I'm not asking for a loan, right? Please do, please, uh, do uh, submit your application. If the application comes back and you're approved, you still have the option to, 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 to not accept it. If it's denied, it makes you eligible for additional assistance that FEMA can provide for your personal property, for transportation assistance, transportation if you lost a car and it was your primary source of vehicle and it wasn't insured, then we can provide you assistance with transportation uh, to get something else that's safe that you can use. And uh, uh, other uh, assistance like child care, uh, dental, medical, uh, health, uh, 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 any injuries that you may have had as well. So important for you to submit that application and get it back. Uh, so a couple things that I'd like to just say, uh, you know, be a little bit patient with us. We're on our staff to make sure that they get out there. Uh, talk to the inspector, contact them again, make sure that you're out there with them, show them all your damage. Um, an important thing that they'll be making determination again is on habitability. And so if your house is unsafe, you know, we want to make sure that we can help you uh, make that safe again. The primary source is that we want to make sure that you can stay in your home and that you can fix your home, and that's what the source of the, the, the financial assistance that you will get. The maximum grant that FEMA <coughs> provides is $33,000. Uh, not everyone receives that. I'll say it right now. If your house, if your house is destroyed, those is, is the ones where it usually it goes. If it has some damage, you know, again, it's scaled down from there. Uh, average grants uh, throughout the country are more along the lines of four or $5,000, being very frank. Now that may, not, may or may not be the case again. Many different examples in the crowd, and I don't want to uh, presume that you have not had any damage. If you are insured, you've contacted your insurance agency, at some point you will receive a settlement. If you have additional damage that was not covered, that's why it's important that you still apply for FEMA assistance. It may be eligible under our program. So our program works for uh, uninsured or underinsured. And so that's an important uh, standpoint. So do apply. Give us the, uh, the information and we'll have uh, our folks go to your property, meet with you, uh, and, and help you throughout this process. Again, we want to make sure that everyone uh, who is eligible uh, on every category, we provide that assistance. So, so we appreciate the opportunity again. Thank you, commissioners, for, uh, for uh, and director for the opportunity to be here. We'll stay here until we answer all your questions. Thank you, Alex.